All right, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install everything on Windows. And this here is a completely new Windows machine, so just set it up and these are the first two links I've opened. So let's start by installing Miniconda. So I actually very much prefer Miniconda to Anaconda because what Anaconda simply does it it installs Miniconda and then on top of that it runs a Conda install Anaconda which is a meta package which simply tells to install 160 packages into the base environment. And then if you make your own environments they're gonna like you need to reinstall them anyway. And of these 100 packages, I'm not sure how many actually, but I don't have a problem to install them manually with the requirements of txt or an environment.yaml file. So I'm I'm not recommending Anaconda. I think it's way too cluttered and I don't need 160, 160 packages in my home directory, in my base environment, I mean. So this is why I'm deciding for Miniconda, which is a lot smaller. Okay, so we downloaded our version here and now we run the graphical installer. Um, this one is fine, so it installs it into my user directory. Yeah, that's like Linux. So we make sure to add it to path. I recommend it even though it itself doesn't. And I also want to be my default Python 3.7. So what I haven't shown you, so let's open a command prompt. What I haven't shown you is where Python, oops, where Python here. Yeah. So from where Python, so ah, wow, Python already exists on this machine. That's interesting. Um, but let's run Python and we see, okay. So this is just a link to download Python. I'm not sure which one I would download if I would actually download this, but we're developers, we don't download stuff from the Windows machine. I don't know which distribution this is. So Anaconda or Viliconda is a certain Python distribution and it's the one we want to have. This is actually in, hmm, special Windows. Okay, I don't know. So this is a Python distribution. You could download that. I don't recommend it. So we, okay, so this is not actually, Python we have installed here. So yeah, let's um, add it to our path because this is the Python. If we want to execute stuff with Python, we want to execute it with a real Python and not with this um, Python installer. That's really interesting that this is just here. Are there more? So we can explore that. Yeah, now we see It's really cheating. It's cheating. That's not Python. Okay. Um. Nope. Nope. Okay. But now, oops. Let's open. Ah, we see we have an Anaconda prompt and an Anaconda PowerShell prompt. That's interesting. And it replaces my CMD with the Anaconda prompt. Okay, so if I want, because I added it to my path, if I now want where Python, we first find this one. And if I execute this, I'm not getting like I'm not getting redirected to the installer, but I'm running the actual Python. So I can hear one plus one, and it's perfect. So this Python server is in a corner environment, but the environment has not been activated. My reason why I failed a lot. Okay, that's interesting. Um, that's Exit on Windows, you have to ah, control Z. Press which one? That's the V, but I'm not that used to Windows. Okay, so let's look how to activate this. Activation prevents the path. Yes, we know this. So I can conda activate, yes, but... So let's look at which environments we have. Conda and list, same as conda info minus minus minus. So we do have the base environment and that's actually active. 
So, Facunda deactivate. No one where we are Python again. Still finds this one first. Okay. Um, Conda activate this should without any arguments. It activates our base environment. Okay, now this looks better. So apparently we need to Conda activate before we do anything. And now it will not give me this warning here. But it is the same Python as we had before. So now the package is so the thing is um control Z on Windows. So the thing is, um where Python is looking for its um dependencies for its packages depends. So Python um Python has multiple um places where it looks for dependencies and most of the time they are in another direct so in a directory which is um close to the executable here. So here it would be this. So let's change directory to this. What's in there? Have to see. Oh dear, and there are some the environments. I think it's called side packages. So let's go to the super directory. Let's open the explorer here. And it's easier to open here. So there should be a somewhere side packages directory. So this here are the executables, right? This is the Python interpreter. This is the Conda executable. Somehow, um, probably like it's, it adds it somewhere to the path and then it executes this one, but the one in the path is a different one. Um, I'm not entirely sure how this works on Windows, but it looks here, but only if it knows this is the environment. So yeah. You need to activate your environment. Yeah, okay, so we just activate base. Earlier versions of earlier versions introduce a switch. Okay, so Conda wants to be less disruptive. Let's do Conda in it if I want to. So let's close our shell. And let's reopen it. And let's run Python. So no. Apparently this doesn't have much effect, yeah. No action taken. So on Windows, you apparently need to conda activate if you want to go into the default environment, and you need to conda activate and then the name of the environment if you want to go into the extra one. Okay, so yes, we added conda to path, um, and then we tested by looking where Python, and it did return um, the path containing slash mini conda in our case. Um, and now we can update conda. conda Conda. Okay, let's also download git. Oh no, no it tells me. Yes, this is what I want. Sure, and once it's fine. That's rather slow. Okay, um, yes, we want to update all of these here. Windows. Okay, so git for Windows. Click next. Program files is fine. I don't care what items. So we don't need the git bash and we never need the git GUI. So git bash we don't need if we add to path. And git GUI I never use because I don't use the git GUI because I don't think it's necessary. Um, yeah, git is fine. 
Oh, Vim. I want to use a little subline atom. That's nice. Can I use nano? So I'm fine with nano. Um, nano and Vim are both inside the terminal. And no pet plus plus, sublime and atom are just really good pure text editors with like which also support code and are still relatively fast. VS Code is people really like VS Code. Um, but it's really bulky. I'm fine with nano. And yes, I want to be able to use Git and even optional Unix tools. Find and sort, that's perfect. I actually, no, nah, let's not do this because that's not clutter our system here. And if you don't want that, you don't want that. OpenSSH, uh, OpenSSL, I mean, yeah, that's perfectly fine. We want to commit Unix style, yes. I said here we want to commit, commit Unix style, which of the ones to take. I don't really care as long as you don't commit as this. Um, sure, use a better terminal, and um, that's good for me, because the standard Windows terminal is not really good. Um, oh, some links. That's nice. Okay, so let's look. Let's run conda list to see which environments we have in our base environment. We see there's already quite a lot here in our base environment. This is just standard stuff conda needs to run. For example, obviously Python and conda and some other stuff. Um, but what we also certainly need to do is we need to conda install Jupyter. So normally I don't recommend to install stuff into your base environment, which is the one we're in here, right? But the Jupyter is just useful to have no matter which environment you're in. So I'm installing Jupyter in my base and additionally in my environment. I don't recommend this for any other packages besides Jupyter and Jupyter Lab because you don't want your base environment to be decluttered. But yeah, this also takes some time. Let's look what Git is doing. It's not one Git bash. Okay, so if I open a new terminal, I can open as many as uh, I want, and now I run where git, now git, it knows git. Okay, so while this is installing, how do we know, how does Windows know where stuff is and how we can run stuff? How we can run stuff? So, so this is the path variable. And the path, so this is a system variable. I can echo this one. And these are all the paths Windows looks in, uh, separate by separated by semicolons here. If we're executing, um, if you're trying to execute a binary or an executable, so a .exe file, without having to specify the um, total path to the file. So this is this is this is the list of paths um, Windows is going to look at if. Um, I try to run stuff. So if I didn't add either git or conda to the path, I would have to use either the git bash, which is, oh, it's called git cmd now, or the, oh no, it's git bash, or the anaconda prompt. The only difference from these two to your normal um, terminal window here is that it's automatically also looking in the directory where there's git. Okay, and if you want to manually do that, for example, if you have your own program, so let's say, so for example, I can run Explorer, I can run, because Explorer is somewhere in a directories of these paths. But if I had another thing, like if I, installed my very own, I don't know if I installed Firefox or something. How could I add that? What I can do is, so let's look at this blend for Visual Studio. So, and this is only a link. So here, this is the target, this is where it is. And if I run blend here on the terminal, it doesn't recognize it, but I can add it. How do I do this? Well, I'm looking at what I want to open, for example, this blend.exe. 
um, and I can add a variable. I can edit the system variables, I mean. Now I can go to environment variables here, and I can look at this path variable. And this is precisely what I just said. And I can just add this path here to that. And there's also a terminal command to add to the path, but I'm not entirely sure what it is right now. Maybe I can look it up. Okay, I looked it up, it's a set command, um, but I have never used that, so let's not use that. So if you want to set environment variables, you can do so via set. Um, but first I added this here to simply to um, the list here. So this is now a variable for the user, so I think it, you need, it uses both. And now if I open a new terminal, it will look into all this, no, not the minister. It will look into all these paths, including the one where there's my blend. And yeah, I'm running blend. That was probably a bad idea because this is probably resource intense, but this is how I add stuff to my... Um, so let's look at... Not in this one, because this one hasn't reloaded yet. So we have to always open a new one for that. And no, you can close again, please. Yes. Now if I um, echo, so I show my path here, uh, I also added this here. So let's try it once. And this is a virtual environment, so I can't screw up my system really much here. So I can set path equals maybe. Now if I echo path. Did I do it? Yes, it deleted the old one. I'm not sure if it works now for new. Yeah, it doesn't um, change it um, for all command prompts, so only once. So if you only need it once, you can set it. If you only need it in one terminal, if you want to add it, actually add it do it via um, simply open the Windows menu set and then your uh, variables, you can just start typing variables and you can edit system and environment variables. Okay, as much as that, let's look at, I haven't installed this. Let's look at JupyterLab, that was rather quick. Okay, um, let's install Node.js2 into our base environment. Let me solve first problems we saw here. So maybe this one just doesn't work. Proceed. Yes, this is a rather new version. Sometimes leads to problems. Just did in my Linux video. Okay, can we do something while this is running? Yes, we have. We can just open another terminal and start cloning. Um, let's clone it. Sure, why not clone it to see users user. Um, so git clone here. Oh, what's the entire command over here? Oops. Uh, not sure what this is doing now. Let's change directory to lectures. And let's start creating this environment. This will also take a while because this now installs around 100. Oh yeah, I've already changed the environment here. Yeah. Well, if I go to the dot dot, can I do it? Yeah, apparently Windows is fine with forward slashes. That's nice. Okay, so this will take some time because it installs around 150 packages, 170. Um, so because like this a list this is a list of packages we can just go into this um the users user lectures and this is simply a list of packages I'm not sure why is just not that um this here tells where, it, so this is the name of the environment, this tells where it installs them from, and this here is, are the dependencies installed. These are not 170, um, but they also need other dependencies. So um, these packages have other packages that they rely on that they additionally install. So 
Now you could ask the question, do I generally install, so pip installs packages and conda installs packages. So what do you use? So conda is like pip, it's um, a package manager, but conda additionally is an environment manager and you want to use Python environments because you don't want your system type Python to be cluttered. So on, on Windows, you don't have a system Python. So there's nothing you can screw up there. But if you have, for example, different projects that require different versions of an of um, libraries, you can't have them simultaneously in the same environment. For example, TensorFlow needs some old environment, needs old versions of some libraries, whereas other packages may require the newest versions or do you just want to have the newest one? The only way to have that is by having them in separate environments. And this is why you should always have environments with Conda. And Conda is just the nicest way on Windows to get environments to running. And it's the same thing on Windows, Linux, and Unix. And then you could ask the question, how do I install packages? You can install packages using pip, and you can also install them using Conda. But I always recommend, so sometimes Conda doesn't work, sometimes pip doesn't work, but I always recommend to start um, trying it with Conda because Conda is smarter at resolving dependencies. So, for example, if you install a program, so if you install library B, and library B needs library A in version 10 or higher, then pip will install library B and library A in version 10. If you then install library C, and library C needs library A in version 9 maximally, then pip will uninstall library A in version 10, install library A in version 9, and install library C, and you thus have a broken environment. And Conda is smart at resolving these dependencies. So Conda doesn't screw up your environment in that case, but warns you. So this is why you should, for example, also use Conda, also it's smarter at reusing stuff you already installed and so on. Okay, so this seems to take forever, so I think I'm just going to pause this video and continue in a second. Okay, so um, I'm done here. Interestingly, it's worked to press Ctrl C to continue. That shouldn't be the case, but whatever. So let's conda and list to see if we actually installed our environment. And yes, we have it. We have activated it. Yes, so let's conda activate scientific programming. Now let's run conda list to see, for example, pandas should be there. Do we have pandas? Yes, we have pandas. So that seemed to work. Also this one here worked. So um, I think this one doesn't really work, as some people told me. Let's try to install it. So this is only a variable inspector. It doesn't really do much. So and it's also even part of the post build. It's not that necessary. Okay, but now that we have installed the environment here, yes, we should also install it in the um, environment here. But I'm just not doing this here because the post build script does that anyway. Okay, so no need to do this because here installing our environment worked, even though it did show me some errors um, because it needed to uninstall Jupyter Lab Server and then probably did some other stuff. But yeah, for now, one Jupyter Lab I should actually be good, should be able to run it. Okay. Oops. Um, okay, so I, it says it started and I can access it here. So normally it should open. I should use localhost uh, 127 or one that's there. Now I use one the same thing. So it's interesting that it doesn't automatically open this here. Um, but if it doesn't, I can probably open it in my browser. So um, if it's slow, I could also try switching to another browser. Yes, build recommended. So we can do this here, or I haven't tested that one before, but I should be able to Jupyter Lab 
build simply from the terminal. Let's see if that works. Because this is simply, yeah, it has some conflict independencies, blah blah, so we could maybe also update some stuff here. But, um, yeah, no need actually. So, yes, activate your environment. Then we want to get the actual repository to run. So, we have some stuff which is not necessary but makes it more pretty in our repository. For example, this visual countdown here. Or the fact that we can hide and review solutions, or the variable inspector, or table of contents. And to do that, um, we want to run the post build here. And yes, this is wrong here in the slide because it says chmod plus x post build. So this only runs in Linux. And npm oh, dependencies fail to install. So if this is the case, what we may have done wrong is that we may have installed the wrong version of Node.js. So let's actually uninstall Node.js here again. Uninstall Node.js. Let's see if we can um, install the version we need. Correct one, I think it's 10.4. I need one second to check that. It was version 3.10.13. Uh, but wait, that's the one we need. Okay. Um, okay, so I see there's a problem here because I think we need version 10.13 and that's installed here. Okay, so why don't we just look into this log? Let's look into it using notepad. Okay, why not just Google the error? Jupyter Lab and PM dependencies failed to install. So apparently we're not the first one to have this. Yes, and we wanted to install ten point thirteen. 10.13 hmm. Okay, let's start something else there too. So that's one Jupyter lab built again. So it's still complaining about some dependencies, which are conflicting. Some extension here, but yeah, maybe we don't need the corner forge version of Node.js. Okay, well, this is resolving. I'm just going to pause the video again here. So now that we did this, um, it seems to have worked. So let's try to run Jupyter Lab again. I will update the slides to install this very specific version of Node.js. Ah, now if I yeah, open HTML files and add stuff like Firefox on this, it's in this Firefox anyway. Okay, and now I see a blank screen. Well, that's not good. Does this thing still have Internet Explorer? It's 
Data white screen. And download Firefox and see if it works better on there. Okay, so I have opened this in Firefox and it immediately installed Firefox, opened the link in Firefox and it immediately works. And now we see that we can already do stuff in here. Alright, so we have the Python installed. Um, however, what we do not have installed, first of all, I'm not sure if I did this in the environment. Yes, I did this in the environment. You can also test it by, for example, trying to import pandas. And this one, so it doesn't give me an error, so it's in the environment which actually has pandas. So I will fix the npm issue, but as much for that. So now we build And now let's try to install the stuff we didn't have before. So this one runs the Jupyter lab. Um, this one is in the base. No, actually, let's kill off the Jupyter lab. Control C. Control C. Until it's done. Maybe it should be more patient. But let's try. Let's try to install. Well, actually, the Redmix engine I, we don't use. So, we only want to install the stuff here from Postman. So, let's change directory to lectures. DS the command. And then we want to run the Postman. So, now we build it, so now we want to run Postman. So, chmod plus x doesn't exist in Windows. It's a Linux command to make stuff executable. This command doesn't exist in Windows, so instead we simply try to run PostBuild. Yeah, we can't do this in Windows. How do I do this? Can I dot? So, uh, okay, so what I can certainly do is... I mean, there's also no bin bash here, so... And there's also no export any set. What I can do here is I can just copy the lines of code where it installs the lab extensions, I hope. Um, and then run these. Probably well, we shouldn't copy the ones with the this means command. But I'm not sure if this works. Okay, so again we have conflicting dependencies. I find a way to resolve them that doesn't seem too important by now. Um, so yeah, what you want to do is you just want to copy all this here into your CMD. This will probably take a while until I did that for all. So I'm pausing again. All right, that took forever. But now I have installed everything. So I simply copied the lines here. Um, into my command prompt, and I also installed this lab extension without any command. Without I oh know wait, I also installed um, this lab extension without any arguments to get rid of this warning. What I also did in the meantime is I made a batch file from this. So on Linux, what you have is you have um, normal text files which you can make executable, and then you can run them line by line. So if you want to run the contents of a Windows file line by line on the terminal, all you have to do is give it the name ending .bat. So uh, somehow, how do I find an exit? So this is a .bat file. And then I had to change some things in this file, for example, comments in Windows are colon colon. And actually, um, so I told you set before, but set is not correct. What you have to do is um, you have to set x. So I want to set a new variable ASA and I simply write set X, no, I write set ASA content of ASA. And now it's saved, and if I now open a new terminal, I can even use the set AS command to see which command, which variables there are, and if I now echo 
ASA, um, it shows me this content here. So you can write variables in Windows like this, um, which is one of here. So node options you can use just like this and everything else basically works the same. And all these commands run and I can just make a .bat file out of this. And then I can simply um, run here postbuild.bat, which simply copies every line of um, that batch file. I can also double click. So I'm going to update the installation instructions for Windows and I'm going to add the postbuild.bat file to the lectures repository. All right, uh, I haven't checked it, so let's look at Jupyter Lab again to see if it now works. So we're now in the lectures directory. So it opens it in Firefox. Uh -huh. um, yes, I definitely want Firefox. Not if I uh, not if I have to click anything. I'm gonna get rid of this machine anyway. So let's see. I think in this library at least. So we now want to check if there are um, um, if there is stuff. Which is uh, which doesn't exist in the bare bone. Oh no, I don't want. Uh, apparently, this lecture here is so wrong because we don't import the beginning of the compile. So what we already, what we already see, for example, here is that we have a new tab here for the table of contents. And this was, for example, um, the TOC. Oh, can I find TOC? STUC, oh, Windows. So the table of contents here, for example, is what we have installed now. Um, so we can see um, the headlines, basically, of the individual iPad notebook files. And also here we have, for example, the countdown. And what we see here, we have hints and solutions. So this is the Jupyter Lab solutions package. And then I'm certain we also have countdowns here somewhere. And so this here is also prettily rendered. Oh, it's gone, but we saw it for a second. So um, this only renders nicely when we have our extensions installed. So one last thing I want to show you, and that is that if we change, so on, on Unix, we copy um, this config file here. On Windows, I'm, let's just not copy it. I haven't looked it up, but we want to have it here anyway. So if we want this Jupyter solution thingy, we can also be a teacher there. And as a student, we can simply hide and see the solutions and the tips. And as teacher, we set the solutions and tips. So let's change my role here to teacher. And let's execute Jupyter Lab again. And not now. Now, if I open the same um, iPad notebook again, I should hopefully see um, uh, possibilities to change cells to either solution or tip cells instead of them being uh, instead of being able to just show or hide them, which is the student view. And yes, I can mark cells here as hints, so I can mark this cell as a hint or as a solution. So this is just the teacher's view. Um, if you're contributing on a lectures repository, you should use the teacher's view. If you're not, please use the student view. I mean, obviously you can see them as well, but it's just better for yourself. So use the student view here, and that should be it. Yes, and I think that's all of what I wanted to show you here. So I will update these slides now. Yes, they weren't too good um, because I haven't installed it on especially Windows for a long time. And I'm sorry if this video was, video was kind of messy, but I'm going to make better installation instructions now. And I hope this also helped some way of how to debug problems I'm having. All right. Bye bye.